Okay, so this is the, uh, it's an HPT pneumatic chipping gun. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how to service this in the field. It's not uncommon to put it away at the end of the day and the next day it doesn't work. Usually that's because um, it wasn't oiled and cleaned out properly before stowing it for the evening. Um, you use it in the water, you have to pull it out when you're done, squeeze your trigger just to purge any extra air out of it, then you'll cut your air off, add some uh, tool oil into the hose, uh, hook it back up, put your air to it again, um, and just flush oil through it a couple of times to help purge any water that's stuck in there. Uh, if you go to use it and the problem is Either it's not hitting hard or, uh, or it's not hitting at all. Um, chances are either your piston is stuck or your valve assembly is stuck um, due to rust. This is going to be a little video about how to just simply take it apart, clean it, put it back together, and hopefully you'll be able to use it for the day. So we'll start by just taking the collar and the bit out. We've got a, a locking spring right here. Pull that guy out, then your collar and your sleeve come off in one. Um, this particular bit will not feed through there. So this is in, has a hex shank with an oval keeper. Um, so you can turn your oval keeper the correct way and it will slide out just like that. There's that in pieces. Next thing you're gonna do uh, to pull the rest of the gun apart is you're gonna separate the handle from the barrel. Um, what keeps the barrel and the handle together are two items. It would be um, a retaining sleeve and then a locking collar, which is inside of that. So we're gonna spread the retaining sleeve and slide it down. And then that will give us access to our locking collar so we can slide that down as well and then unthread the handle. That's what I'm gonna do now. If you have a vise, that would be ideal. Um, if you're in the field, it's probably not gonna happen. So good luck with that, because this can be kind of a bear if you don't have the right tools. Also, these snap ring pliers, uh, these end up being pretty nice for this particular setup. You can use uh, couple of flat heads, but that's a little more challenging, but doable. So we got the retaining sleeve slid down. Then here's the locking collar. Just slide that back. And now you can unthread the handle from the barrel. We'll go ahead and remove it from the vise. Bring it over here. And for this, just so our valve and our piston don't fall out, I'm gonna hold it up like this. That way everything stays in the barrel. Handle removed. What you're seeing here on the top is the valve assembly. It's a uh, well, three three part assembly. Here it is. So you got the top of your casing, pull it apart. You got the valve itself, and then the other part of the casing. This only goes together one way. Um, so that sits on these two pins, alignment pins. These pins, uh, if you notice, one side is larger than the other. They only go in one way. Large side goes into the barrel. There are only two holes that they can fit in, so you can't really screw that up, hopefully. Pull these out. Look at our piston real quick. Uh, once we're done with the piston, just describe that a little bit, then we'll start on the valve, just what to clean um, and how to put it back together. So you pull your piston out. This whole thing's already been cleaned, so it's pretty good. Uh, 
the piston, if it's rusted, you'll end up having to knock it out with something, um, maybe like a metal dowel or something like that. Um, you have to push it, your dowel, in through the end of the barrel um, and then push it back out of this end. Uh, so usually just some kind of like a metal rod with a, with a hammer just to tap it out because um, just even a little bit of rust will get these to seize up and you're not going to move it easily. Um, so yeah, so you'll clean this up, oil it using uh, sandpaper. We use real fine grit sandpaper. That way you're not scarring up the piston or the, uh, or the cylinder, the barrel. Um, so something real fine grit or a wire brush can be helpful as well. When it comes to cleaning out the barrel itself, if it's not too rusted, you can just get away with using um, like a coned wire brush, stick it in there, twist it around, um, spray some air to oil or PB blast or something like that in there. Um, after you get that scrubbed out, you want to make sure that you clean out any of the residual rust or anything that's in there, debris. Uh, what I normally do is I'll take a, a rag. Um, stick the corner on the end of a dowel or something like that and just push it through and then just kind of work the rag back and forth to get any any extra stuff off the barrel. After you got that all clean, you can uh, oil it, throw your piston back in, which should move nice and easy like that. Stand it up. We'll go ahead and throw our pins in, that way they're not in our way. Those are in place. Then we got our valve assembly. So you want to make sure that this edge is clean because uh, you don't want air spraying out the side of it. Once it's opened up, you'll also want to make sure that this is clean. Make sure this is clean. Then your, uh, your valve itself. Just want to make sure that's kind of free of debris and things like that. Sand it off. Sand these as well. These, uh, these surfaces all seal together. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure that's free of, of dirt and rust. These holes are not exactly centered up on here, so they only go together one way. So if I put this like that, wait, that's the right way. That's. Yeah, so it has to be spun like that. You'll, you'll see, once you're looking at it, um, the holes will have to line up. If they don't line up correctly, then what it is, is it's just not, you gotta reorient it. Um, okay, so then this also sits onto the barrel one way as well. Uh, this uh, rounded or I guess bean-shaped hole right there is what goes on this notched out part. Uh, so, just for the heck of it, we'll take it apart. This and down. There. Throw this guy in. Is that right? Yeah. There you go. Everything fits on there just as it should. It should sit right in place. You should never have to tap it into place or anything like that. It should fall right into place. It's all cleaned up. It's all oiled. Take your handle, thread it back on. Um, if you have trouble threading it on, clean the threads. Um, never force it. Um, if you have to, if it's tight the whole way down, you've probably cross threaded it or something. Um, so just be careful with that. This should easily thread all the way down until it seats up onto the barrel and makes a proper seal. There we go, stopped. You want to make sure that's good and snug. And you take it. Right way. Just 
close as I'm going to get, so I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. There we go. So now your handle's snug, the locking collar's in place. And you got to take your retaining sleeve, spread it apart, and slide it back up toward the handle. Yeah, that's in place. Now, hold on, let me slide a little bit. There we go. So that's good. Then you're ready to put this back together. Uh, this particular gun can use even either the round shank oval keeper. Or in this case, it also fits the hex shank oval keeper as well. If you have a gun that's made for the hex shank, it will not fit the round shank. Gotta know your bits, man. Put your spring back in. Uh, if you're using this in the water, you always want to put tape on here because if you're in water that you can't see, uh, if you can't see your hands or what you're doing, your spring can fall out. Uh, and then if that falls out, you're losing your bit and your collar. Uh, neither of those things are cheap. And then always, always, always use plenty of oil. You cannot use too much oil with these things. Um, oil it before you use it. Oil it a couple of times when you're done. Make sure you're purging all the water out of it and should be pretty good. That's it, thank you.